Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Sarah Bonk, and I'm the founder of Business for America, and we're so excited to host this conversation. This is Election 2022, Tools to Maximize Employee Engagement. This webinar is designed for companies that have made a commitment to helping their employees and customers vote and who want to take their civic engagement efforts to the next level. Today, we'll be hearing from MotiVote, Ballot Ready, Vote America, and Time to Vote about a variety of practical tools, techniques, and ideas to get you going in the right direction. And again, take the work that you're already doing, that commitment you've already made, and take it to the next level. Before we get started, I do want to tell you a little bit about Business for America. So as some of you, some of you attending already know me, uh, before Business for America, I was part of the business world, and I had a successful career at Apple in Cupertino for nearly 15 years, and I left because I believe that the business community has a duty to help protect our representative democracy. Business for America was founded on the idea that the public interest and the interests of business are aligned in having a well-functioning democracy, and of course that means having voters vote, a high level of turnout, a high level of civic engagement among our people. Business for America works with civic-minded companies of all sizes to take action in support of protecting and promoting democracy. This includes encouraging our employees and customers to vote, and it also includes advocating for legislation to ensure that every eligible voter has safe, secure access to the ballot box, and encouraging our lawmakers to work across the aisle to protect our democratic institutions. And I'm happy to report that more and more businesses are looking to join the cause. Some companies get involved for moral reasons because every eligible voter deserves to have a voice in how we are governed. And other companies get involved for business reasons because democracy is the best system of government for our market-based economy driven by enterprise, innovation, and competition. So regardless of the reason why your business cares about the health of our republic, Business for America has ways that you can get involved and make a difference. So if you ever wish to learn more, you can find us at bfa.us. So with that, let's get back to the reason for today's webinar, increasing civic engagement among our employees and getting out the vote in 2022. We're gonna start with our first speaker. Uh, Jess Regal is the co-founder and CEO of MotiVote. MotiVote is a platform powered by behavioral science and this technology platform empowers companies to manage their employees, uh, civic engagement initiatives, create community among their employees, and use psychological nudges to incentivize voting. Jess, please take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Bonk, and excited to chat with you all today. Uh, my name is Jess Regal. I am based in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of MotiVote. Um, I'm excited to kick off the set of tool presentations and demos today, diving into specific ways that companies that have made a commitment to supporting their employees in navigating uh, the voting process in the 2022 midterms and beyond, looking at what are some tangible ways that, that you can do that in practice. Uh, so we at MotiVote, like uh, the others you'll hear from today, we want to help build a world where more people vote more often. And we do that by helping organizations help voters in their communities navigate what can often be a confusing process. I want to start out with a quick background on who we are and how we approach voter engagement, since that shapes some of the unique aspects about our, our model and tool. So my co-founder and I met back while we were studying the behavioral psychology of civic participation as masters of public administration candidates a couple years ago. As a former first grade teacher and her being a community organizer, we had seen how tough it was to help people move from saying they'll do something or intending to do something to actually doing it. And as we looked around at the status quo for civic engagement, uh, we saw there was right, a ton of focus on telling people, this is important, remember to do this. But in our minds, not in enough of an understanding or focus on the sort of mental barriers and behavioral breakdowns that can get in the way. Uh, so research shows that about 50% of registered voters end up not casting a ballot because of what we call a micro barrier, something like a missed deadline, a busy schedule, lack of information, confusion, 
procrastination, all just part of being human. So what the Motivote product does is we uh, focus specifically on helping people overcome these micro barriers. And we do that using the same types of behavioral nudge strategies that help us go to the gym and save money, things like social accountability and plan making nudges. So through this behavioral framework, our focus is on not just giving voters information about voting, but actively guiding them through the journey. So Motivote as a platform is a web-based dashboard and reminder service uh, that is branded for your organization. Uh, it's web-based, which means there's nothing to download, and mobile-friendly, which means you can use it uh, on your smartphone as well. And our goal is to make it easy for our partners to get employees the right information at the right time to support a fun social experience that helps build great culture and to give you as program leaders and administrators a clear picture of your engagement and impact. The way we do this is by bringing together a set of research proven nudges, things like teams, friendly competition, progress tracking, gamification, and rewards um, that help move people from having information to acting on it. So for example, uh, research shows that when you make a concrete plan for when and where to vote, you're around nine percentage points more likely to follow through with it. So we incentivize the act of plan making by helping you do it with a peer network um, and gamifying the process. What it looks like in practice from an employer and employee's point of view is you can um, invite your employees to join sort of company teams. So this could be uh, any structure that fits your community. It could be employee resource groups, department-based, region-based, location-based, or you could opt out of the team-based structure and simply um, let employees use this as an individual resource. Your employees are going to get automated reminders via their choice of SMS or email that are specific to the voting plan that they've made and their progress toward their goals. They're going to complete additional actions, tracking progress progress and earning points. And we incorporate leaderboards, gamification, and friendly competition to keep it fun and social. Your voters can actually earn uh, real life rewards through the points that they uh, earn on Motivote. And these can be things that are, you know, team based around culture building, like a, um, you know, a lunch or virtual ad outing for a specific team, or they can be something that's um, cause based and related to your mission, like winning a uh, charitable donation to a cause of your choice. So super customizable and kind of based on your goals uh, for, for your community. And then finally, whether voters are voting early or absentee or election day, we take them through the finish line and they can easily share their selfie to confirm that they followed through and celebrate. And then uh, finally, just as we want uh, this journey to be easy and fun for our voters, we also want it to be easy and fun for you as program leaders and administrators. Um, so to set up Motivote with your community, we'll work with you to create a custom brand portal. Um, so things like colors, uh, visual design, fonts um, are all your look and feel. You'll invite your community to join using the same channels that you're already communicating with them through. And then we take it from there. Uh, since users are receiving nudges about their action plans and reminders for Motivote, um, you can feel confident that they're getting the election information uh, that they need. So I'm going to spend the last uh, minute of my time uh, walking through what this looks like in practice. And then we'll talk about at the end, um, everyone who's attending will receive a follow-up resource um, that walks through additional information, you know, how to get in touch and how to, how to dive deeper. So to give the super quick preview of, of Motivote, um, as you can see, this is a web-based uh, dashboard at a uh, sort of uh, what can be a private uh, URL. All of the things that you see that in this case are purple um, would be customized with your brand colors along with visual assets, fonts, um, and so forth. The main components of Motivo are actions that our voters complete. We have uh, the opportunity to add custom actions, things like surveys, feedback, polls, if you want people to engage with educational, uh, you know, 
content, respond to it, you can optionally do that. And then we also have our vote ready actions. You can see that my user Danny Demo over here um, has already entered their address to find their next election, which is a fake election coming up a couple of weeks in New York. Um, they've selected that they're going to vote by absentee ballot. We walk through and digest, here's all the different ways you can uh, vote based on your state rules. Um, and then you'll see I have some action steps that are walking me through what I need to do to vote absentee in New York. Um, so I'm not gonna dive into each one, um, take too much time, but as an example, you'll see you'll confirm your excuse. Um, once you do that, that will unlock being able to request your absentee ballot, and then you'll make a concrete plan for when and where to return it. And you'll see here that my D Danny Demo user has already completed some additional actions, like adding election day to their calendar, signing up for reminders, checking their registration status, and so forth. If you choose to turn on teams and members, you'll be able to get an overall picture of how your uh, employees are engaging. You can invite them to create their own teams or you know, specific department-based employee resource groups, whatever makes sense for your network. Uh, if you choose to turn on member leaderboards, this is a fun way to track friendly competition, sort of where people are in the process in terms of making their voting plan. Um, and you can sort that in lots of different ways to understand really what engagement looks like. Um, and then the last two parts, which are all about making this experience fun and social, are our prize store and our voting tracker. Uh, so on Motivote, you're earning points for taking actions that increase the likelihood of turnout, things like making a plan to vote or checking your registration status, very importantly, not for the act of registering, requesting a ballot or voting itself. And you can earn points that um, you use to enter to win real life rewards. Um, Motivote stocks our prize store with rewards that your users can access. Um, and you can also choose to add your own prizes uh, that are custom to your community can be things like swag, experiences, charitable donations, and so forth. Last but not least, a feature that you can turn on is the I Voted Selfie Tracker. Once you're signed up for Motivote and we know your next election, you can either upload your selfie or you just text it to us and it appears on um, the selfie tracker as just a really fun social way to um, help nudge people to, to follow through and celebrate uh, that they completed the voting process. So once again, I'm Jess Regal, uh, this is Motivote. I am happy to be in touch with anyone who's interested in um, learning more. Uh, really quickly, Jess, yeah. as we move on to the next section, we do have a question. So I thought we'd just awesome. answer in real time here. Great. Um, so we have a question from Mike, who's asking if this can be used by the individual. What I think we, we know it needs to be done as a group, but he is asking if other civic organizations or multiple organizations could uh, use the web-based service. Yes. If I think I think I understand. So we do work directly with organizations, be they um, higher ed. So we've worked with colleges and universities, nonprofits um, and companies. We've had in a couple of cases, um, organizations that have sort of, you know, uh, affiliate or umbrella structures where they have uh, multiple partners sort of on one, uh, on one platform and they'll set up different teams. Um, so that they can um, each sort of organization that's participating under that umbrella structure um, sort of has a home that's, you know, branded with their look and feel. Um, but Motivote is sort of a, a platform that we will set up branded for an organization um, versus an individual not attached to any organization. That said, once you're on Motivote, we do have an invite friends feature. So you can earn points for inviting friends either within your network or if you in the um, employer case, if they choose to open it up to sort of non-employees, like you wanna create a team of your friends and family, that's an option as well. Great, well, Jess, if you could put your contact information in the chat for folks, a couple of people are yeah. inquiring and want some more details, um, that would be great. So thank you, thanks Seth, thank thanks you, Jess. Guys. Yeah, well, so we're next gonna move on to Ballot Ready. Uh, we have with us Alex Nimchewski. And Ballot Ready provides, yeah, who doesn't know about Ballot Ready? It's so, <laughs> it's so ubiquitous. But Ballot Ready provides all the information voters need to be prepared for each election in one place, everything on your ballot in one place. And their data helps power other voter engagement platforms, which is why we see them around so much. Um, pretty amazing set of tools. And Alex is going to tell us all about it. Take it away, Alex. Thank you so much for that very nice intro, Bunk. I appreciate it a lot. And thank you, Jess, for going first and for helping organize this. I also appreciate that a lot. 
Um, so, hey everyone, I'm Alex. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ballot Ready. We are a one-stop shop of everything voters need to be informed about how to vote and who to vote for. And Civic Engine is our platform for meaningful employee engagement. So whether your employees or customers are first time voters or they consider themselves politicos, we make it easy for them to level up their civic engagement and feel good about the company that they work for. So here's how Civic Engine works. Our guiding principle is that we meet voters where they are and give them the information they need to vote fully empowered. So the first part of Civic Engine is our voter guide. The way we think about this is often as voters, when we see the ballot, it's the first time we're seeing many of the candidate names or we expect only the top two names of, that we've heard of like Trump and Biden to be on the ballot or we get there and we read a ballot measure or ballot question and we still have no idea what it means. So with our platform, voters type in their address and we show them all the candidates and ballot measures that will be on their specific ballot and we show them nonpartisan background information like where the candidates worked, their previous experience, who endorses them, and their stances on issues in their own words. And we also help people understand what the ballot measures actually mean, what voting yes means, and what voting no means. Research shows that showing voters information about what's going to be on their ballot actually increases the likelihood that they will vote because they're more confident in their choices and they feel like they can actually cast an empowered vote all the way down the ballot. The second part of Civic Engine, the Civic Engine platform is about how to vote. Even in normal times, figuring out how to register and how to vote can be tough for people who are busy with their day-to-day -day lives. But this year, and especially since COVID, when rules have been changing and there are lots of headlines about voter suppression and changing le legislation, it can feel overwhelming. So our platform makes it super quick and easy to figure out how to vote. So we hold a voter's hand through the process of registering to vote, signing up to vote by mail, finding the closest Dropbox locations to them, um, and uh, figuring out how to vote in person, whether it's early or on election day. We know that voters feel at ease knowing they have information at their fingertips about all their options so they can make the best choice for them. The third part of Civic Engine is year-round civic engagement. So our platform includes primaries and local elections that happen throughout the year. So there's always a way for a voter anywhere to take action. So what I mean by this is, if you were to use the platform today in Texas, we might prompt you to see the candidates that will be on your ballot for the primary in a couple of weeks. But if you were coming to the platform from Maryland, we might prompt you to register to vote or sign up to vote by mail because there's no election really, really soon. We also know that, especially since 2020, voters are really hungry for ways to stay engaged in between major elections. So we can show them who won elections, who represents them, and we can show them meaningful advocacy actions to take based on your company's values. We've worked with hundreds of organizations and companies and find that the best first step to take is discussing best practices to figure out a campaign that suits your needs. So just as a quick example, when we worked with Bain, we had a campaign with their campaign involved using Slack to send our tools and platform out to all their employees. Um, it's super easy to get set up with us. Basically all that we do is we ask you for your branding. We send you a calendar of important dates and deadlines so you can plan your campaign. And we assign you a dedicated support person from our team in case you have questions along the way. So to get started, or if you have any questions, feel free to email me at alex at ballotready.org. And like this says, we are trying to create a country where 
everyone is ballot ready. So thank you for helping us along the way. Thank you, Alex. I think, you know, just a real quick question too, since, you know, we're dealing with the business audience here and your last slide had a few businesses. Is there maybe even just like a, an example of um, business doing something cool with your tools and your platform that you could give us real quick? Yeah, one that we were particularly excited about recently was Snapchat just um, used our tools to help their users figure out how to run for office. So mo much of the data that I talked about was like, who are the candidates? How do you vote? But we also maintain data on what are the filing instructions? How do you figure out how to run for office? And we got thousands of people partnered with candidate recruitment and training organizations to actually run for office for the first time. So we're very proud nice. of that. Very cool. Great. Well, thank you again, Alex. And if, I guess your uh, contact information is right there if anybody wants to get in touch. All right. Well, we will move on next to Vote America. We have with us Lori Leninger. She's the Director of Strategic Partnership Initiatives at Vote America. Vote America seeks to empower the most vulnerable voters to navigate the path to exercising their vote. They target outreach to the millions of low and no propensity voters who are generally neglected by partisan groups. Really fascinating set of work. I've spoken with uh, Vote America several times and love their strategic angle and finding the ways to motivate voters that um, a lot of other people don't get to. So with that, we will hand it off to Lori to tell us more about Vote America. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, let me get this shared here. Um, as Sarah mentioned, my name is Lori Leninger. I run partnerships at Vote America. Just some quick background about our organization. Uh, we are a nonpartisan nonprofit organization, and we really sit at the interface of technology and voter engagement. It is our goal to build tools and technology to help all voters along every step of the voting process. So much of your voting process is filling out paperwork. And in so many spaces, we have figured out how to make paperwork seamless and somehow voting has not yet reached that goal. So we are consistently building tools to try and help voters reach their polling place in as many digitally native spaces as possible. Our team is built out of a full swath of election and voter turnout experts, including our CEO, Deborah Cleaver, who also founded Long Distance Voter, electionday.org, vote.org, and Swing the States. We also run Get Out the Vote programs in perpetuity. These are all research-based and backed by academia. So if you ever need tips and tricks as the best way to reach out to potential voters, hit us up. But into the meat of what we are going to discuss today, we have a full suite of voter engagement tools. Um, as I mentioned, we try and make sure that we're making something seamless along every step of the voting process. All of our tools are easily embeddable via simple widgets, but if you want to go big, uh, you can use our open source API for further customization. And we have a registered vote tool, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, we also have a verification tool for individuals to verify their registration status. A uh, hot tip, if you are reaching out to your employees or customer base about voting, always ask them to check their registration status. You're going to get probably an 80% reaction rate from a prompt to verify versus 7% if you just ask people to register to vote. We also have a absentee ballot request tool, a uh, tool where you can find your polling place and anyone that uses our tools receives reminders about their upcoming deadlines, election dates, and election information in perpetuity. So everything lasts longer than I think any of us are thinking about our 2022 programs. And we will keep your engaged users voting for many years to come. A couple of details and capabilities about our tool set. For the forms, absentee, and voter registration, again, we try and make everything as digitally native as possible. So whenever possible, we will redirect to a state if there is online registration. Um, for absentee ballot, we have also built in e-signature options for the handful of states where you can fax or email in your form. So individuals can take a quick photo of their signature and we will apply it to the form in the correct location and fax or email that form in. And in the states where they will not allow us to go as digital as we want, 
Uh, we do offer print and mail so that an individual, if they don't have a printer, can have their form and a pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelope mailed to them. Our tools are all open source, so partners can audit for security and reliability. And we also do an extensive third-party penetration test for a security review. And lastly, our tools are all very accessible. It's all mobile friendly, lightning fast, 508 compliant. And we also recently uh, enabled all of our tools and our data to be translated into multiple languages. You can quickly see registering to vote. It's a quick four-step workflow. Um, specifically, if you cannot register to vote online in your state and uh, verifying your status is a quick three-step workflow. And so all of these can be, it's going to be done in a pretty quick, simple process. And we, uh, so you know, collect as little information as possible to be able to still complete the process of verifying, registering, requesting a ballot in addition to um, some individual information to continue to do get out the vote efforts in perpetuity. Um, beyond our tool set, we have a civic data API as well uh, in order to do our jobs well and help others do their get out the vote efforts. We maintain 100 plus data points for every state in terms of election rules, voter registration deadlines, ID requirements. But beyond that, we also get into the nitty gritty that no one else wants to think about, like finding your absentee ballot trackers, early and election day rules. Do you have to postmark your registration or does it have to be received by a date? Contact information for local election officials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on and on. But this does allow you to also surface information. You can see um, on the right hand side, we had a, a major partnership with Credit Karma where they utilized our tool set with the APIs to both offer the tools and actions individuals can take, but also to automatically surface information that would be really valuable to the voter themselves. And if you are gonna go big, either internally or externally, we offer a lot of support to all of our partners so that you can A-B test, you can connect, connect your data, if you want to track different information, we're, we're always here to help and show any results we've done with previous research for engagement and communication tactics. But we have all of the tracking support you could want for campaigns. And we also, via Blue Link, um, allow your data to be able to sync automatically into um, many of the databases that I'm sure everyone is already using. I'm sure there are many other things to discuss. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, we are happy to help you figure out how to engage your employees. Great. That is great, Lori. Thank you so much. I actually have a little follow-up question here that I think is relevant to what you just shared, which said, is there a platform slash toolbox that can help employees or employee teams start and run or get involved in GOTV efforts in their local communities. And it seems like some of the things you just shared would be um, optimal for that. Very much useful. It's super simple with a lot of the information, the tool sets that we have to pull together quick toolkits if people want to engage their communities. Um, and our tool set uh, is actually if you're not interested in any of the backend data and whatnot, all of those widgets are available for free. So anyone that's looking to run something totally separate within your community, feel free to go to voteamerica.org and you can pull that information very easily. Great, great. And I'll also just note real quickly for folks who are um, for, who are watching, we've had a couple questions about pricing. And I think we we'll just simply say the easiest thing is going to be getting in touch with whichever speaker has a tool that interests you the most. Um, the prices vary widely depending on what you're trying to do. Some of the tools that you've seen today are free and other things are you know, based on who's using them and how many users. Like if you think about if you were to roll out one of these tools at your company, the price may vary depending just on how the size of your organization and the number of users you engage. So please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of our speakers today for those questions. So great. Thank you again, Lori. And then finally, we have time to vote. And we've got JJ Huggins of Patagonia's PR and communications team. 
Uh, Time to Vote was started in 2018, and it is a nonpartisan business-led initiative to help ensure employees across America don't have to choose between voting and earning a paycheck. And at this time, nearly 2,000 companies have made that commitment to ensuring their employees can vote. And Business for America is proud to have worked with JJ and the uh, Time to Vote companies and helping to recruit a number of companies to join. And we encourage any company that hasn't made that commitment to do so today. JJ is going to tell you all about Time to Vote. Please take it away, JJ. Thank you, Bonk, and thank you to the other panelists and the 80 or 90 or so people who are taking the time out of their day to be on this webinar. It's really cool to see all that. Like Bonk said, I work on the PR communications and public policy team at Patagonia. I basically do whatever they ask me to do. I also get to work on the steering committee for a program called Time to Vote, which I'm here to talk about today. Before I get into Time to Vote, though, I just want to say that in listening to the previous speakers, I'm sitting here thinking about a phenomenon that we've seen at Patagonia over the years. And the phenomenon is that we have a workplace culture that really embraces civic engagement and activism. That stems from our roots as an environmental activist company or even an environmentalist organization sort of posing as a company sometimes. That environmental activism that is so ingrained in the DNA of Patagonia fosters a, an intrinsic motivation for our employees to vote and to get involved. And we have a, a work culture where everyone votes. It's just, it's the norm. Everyone knows everyone votes and you can talk about it pretty openly and it's just baked into the, the culture and the way we operate. All these tools that the other speakers are talking about can help you create a culture at your company where the employees will see that voting and civic engagement is important to the company. Another thing we can all do, another thing that we all really have to do this year is ensure that our coworkers get time off to vote and that we give them whatever resources we can to make sure they know when, where, and how to vote. And these tools obviously can help you do that. If your company is not already a member of Time to Vote, I highly, highly encourage you to join. There's some questions in the chat about ballpark pricing for these things. Time to Vote is free. It's funded by the founding companies, which are Patagonia, Levi's, and PayPal. And it is totally free for folks to join. We have almost 2,000 companies enrolled right now. Time to Vote is a nonpartisan business-led initiative to increase voter participation. How does it work? It's pretty simple. CEOs and business owners in Time to Vote are committed to ensuring their employees don't have to choose between showing up for work and getting paid and voting. <clears throat> Quite simply, we ensure that the employees have the time they need to vote. Now, there is no one-size-fits-all mechanism for Time to Vote companies because with 2,000 companies, you're going to have a variety of needs. Some companies get the shutdown on election day, like Patagonia. We always take things to the extreme. We give our, our people in the U.S. the day off on election day. A lot of companies can't do that. So some folks will give a couple hours of paid time off, which is actually state law in a lot of places. Some other companies, you might be based in a state where you're a vote by mail state. And there are different things you can do to give folks some flex time or some time on the clock to fill out their absentee ballot. Um, really what's important, and the other thing we're seeing is with so many Americans working remotely these days, thanks to COVID, there's a lot of, there's also all these changes to the voting laws in certain states that we've seen in 2021 that are gonna hit people in 2022. There's gonna be a lot of confusion this year Folks, a lot of people have moved and changed jobs and everything. So like I said at the beginning, giving people that time off and the information they need is going to be so critical this year. And, and those of you in this space who, who have been at it for a while know that interest tends to fall off in the non-presidential years. The midterms tend to be whacked with voter apathy. And what we can do is, is foster that culture at our own individual companies where voting is cool. And 
we show the employees that it's cool because we give them the time, the information, and the resources to do it. When we do that, this is what we see in Patagonia. When we do all that, the employees see that they are valued, not just as a worker, but as a human, as someone who contributes not just to the company, but also to society. We are humbled, like Monk said in the beginning, we started Time to Vote in 2018 with, with three companies, Patagonia, Levi's, and PayPal. We were able to recruit Walmart right off the bat, so Walmart's another founding member. We built this little movement to 411 companies in 2018 for the midterms that year. We got it up to almost 2,000 in 2020. A lot of you on this call, I'm sorry, I'm probably preaching to the choir here because a lot of you on this call work for companies that are already in time to vote. We've got all kinds of major companies around the country, all the way on down to like your local mom and pop coffee shops. It doesn't matter. You could be a company of one person. That's still one vote. We want you in time to vote. I mean, it includes a lot of the major companies, Fortune 500s and so forth, but also the small and mid-sized companies around the country that are the lifeblood of the American economy. Again, it's free. If you are not a member of Time to Vote, please join. If you are not a member of Time to Vote, but you already provide time off to your employees, please join Time to Vote anyway. There is strength in numbers. By getting more companies into this movement, we're sending a message to the rest of the country that the business community cares about voting, cares about civic engagement, and we put our money where our mouth is and we provide these, these benefits to our employees. The website is maketimetovote.org. I'll drop it in the chat. You can go on there. You, you need approval from your company leadership. And then you can fill out a form on maketimetovote.org. You submit the form. That comes to those of us on the back end. We vet every application to make sure everything is on the up and up. And, and a lot of times we'll reach out to folks and verify things. And then it's pretty seamless after that. It takes us a week or two to vet folks. We give you an approval. And then you're in our database and you get our communications and we're, we're best friends after that. Thank you. That's great, JJ, thank you. I think, you know, one question I would ask because it has come up so much has to do with being nonpartisan. And of course, being from Patagonia and uh, being with a company that is so um, active in the political sphere and generally on issues that are perceived as being left-leaning. I wonder how you have responded to the, the kinds of accusations that there's a political motive behind time to vote. Totally. You can look at the, the list of companies that are in time to vote and you can, we have that all posted on maketimetovote.org. And when you look at all those companies, it represents every type of person in the country because Sure, there's the Patagonias, there's the, the sort of hippie companies on there, but then there's uh, Bank of America, there's Walmart, there's Nike, there's, you know, it's, it's a swath. So we know you can't have a company as large as, you know, a lot of the companies, the folks on this call, and, and know that everyone's going to vote one way or the other. It represents every type of American. That's great. Thank you for that. I know um, all of us on the call here speaking today are passionate about democracy and participation and just believe that our country is better the more people are engaged and paying attention and filling out their ballots thoughtfully and showing up at the polls every time or completing their ballot and sending it in by whatever means necessary. So thank you for adding that. Um, we did have a question I want to get to real quick here. Next, um, we answered in the chat, but let's go ahead and talk about it live. Somebody asked about uh, engaging youth. And I think, um, why don't we start with you, Lori, just a, a couple of notes about what you're doing around youth engagement. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we um, just very high level always have focused our get out the boat efforts around the new American majority. So that is going to be youth, underserved audiences, and single females. Uh, but in addition to that, we are looking this year to partner with um, not just colleges, but actually the software solutions they are using, the learning management systems and registration systems to go ahead and integrate the process of filling out paperwork of voter registration with all of the other paperwork you have to complete as a college student. So 
we are currently looking for all of the partnerships and uh, engagement that we can find to get 100% registration with college students, um, as well as looking to actually conduct a longitudinal study with academia, looking at future voters. Uh, we are working to get young people under the age of 18 engaged now. And then we wanna test how many elections we can remind them to vote in uh, over the course of 10 years to see, can we confirm that the first time that you vote indicates how much you are a voter and voting is a habit. So if we get you to do it three times in a row, right off the bat, can we go ahead and kill the need to do voter engagement at the age of like 30, 40, and 50? That's great. And Alex, you said you have some things going on at ballot ready as well? Yeah, um, also would love to see and participate in that research, Lori, if that would be <laughs> um, We, so some things we've previously done are like worked with Snapchat. Obviously Snapchat has a lot of users who are young voters, first time voters. Um, and that's just a great way to be meet them where they are. We also worked, had, did a cool thing with the Minnesota Secretary of State where they had mock elections in all their schools um, for kids who aren't of age to vote, but the idea is getting them the experience of voting so that they're more likely to do it. And this year, one effort we're doing is with colleges, not only teaching college students about how to vote, but how to organize and how to get their friends to vote. So making it a little fun competition um, so we can reach more voters. Very cool, thank you. Well, and Jess, I think I'd ask you the similar question. In this case, you know, with when it comes to MotiVote, obviously it's designed around folks who, it's probably friendlier for folks who are digitally native and youth who are accustomed to engaging in this manner. How is that working out for you with the younger set? Yeah, so about a quarter of our partners to date have been uh, groups uh, that are uh, based within higher ed communities. So examples of that would be like Miami-Dade College has MDC votes. Uh, Colby College has Colby votes. Uh, University of Pennsylvania has Penn leads the vote. They're all very original with, with their naming. And so what these groups have done is because they already have um, a process often of hiring of having student leaders become sort of ambassadors and doing outreach to you know all the captains of the sports teams and all the RAs and you know student government leaders, people who are in a sense micro influencers on campus and have their own networks, um, and using the motive vote structure to kind of host that competition. Um, and then incorporating things that are particularly right appealing to college students, which is like free swag, free stuff, free food on the prize side. Um, we find it's a really great leadership opportunity uh, for students. Um, a couple of the colleges we've worked with have actually built programs around um, paying, uh, hiring paid student strategists uh, to come up with implementation plans, um, you know, across their campus network, build a lot of, you know, communication planning leadership skills. Um, so we do find it works uh, really well uh, for our newest, youngest voters, uh, both because um, our focus on holding their hand through the process is sort of the most needed at the, the very first time when you're gonna, when you're going to vote. And because of the sort of, uh, friendly competition and gamification nudges uh, that move them through that process are particularly appealing uh, for, for younger folks who are in social environments. That's great. And I know that every, as we've been talking to companies, there's some thought that um, we may see those competitions arise between different departments within a corporate headquarters, but it could also be between different locations, different facilities. So a retail organization or hospitality, maybe it's this hotel versus that hotel. And that Kind of friendly competition can help um, drive participation. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we're we're humans. We like to you know have affinity. We like to be part of of different groups and networks. So I think that's why sort of across the board, um, when we think about how do we make the process of participating in democracy right kind of more accessible and enjoyable and fun, right? So often it goes to how do we do that with our existing social networks and communities. That's great. It's great. We also had a question about who is usually responsible for these kinds of activities. I think we probably have some attendees who are thinking about, you know, they may not be the decision maker at their own company, but they're looking to talk to those folks and see what they can do to encourage some of these activities. Um, Jess reflected that you're often working with corporate social responsibility, corporate impact, 
uh, human resources, people operations. Um, we also see a lot of times government relations, public affairs, and uh, employee resource groups are another one. Um, I wonder, like Alex and Lori, I see some nodding. Are these the groups that you usually find yourselves working with? It's a, I guess, also marketing corpcom. Yeah, I mean, it depends if you're looking internally or external engagement. But if you're doing internal engagement, I would I would speak to your your people team, your DEI team specifically. Um, I've done a lot of work with DEI teams on building this out for internal engagement. And then if you're looking externally, I would definitely speak with marketing, comms, public affairs. Great. Great. Um, JJ, on that question too, you know, you have been talking directly to a lot of companies as they're going through this decision-making process. Uh, what tips and, and tricks have you got for people who are trying to drive consensus at their company and move forward with um, starting to take their efforts to the next level? That's a great question. You need to find your internal allies. I think listing the different departments that are effective with this stuff, I'm, I'm biased, but public relations, public affairs is often a good one because we touch everything within the company and we know we have good relationships with folks so we can often drive things up to the decision makers and, and put a good spin on it and, and get things approved. So I think that's a good team to work with. And then if you're on those teams, it's getting buy-in from your whoever your VP, whatever your level is, and then ultimately the, the leadership, the CEO, and you got to do what you can. Sometimes I've seen it with companies that are the like the types of people on these calls want to do something and then they hit those roadblocks with the folks above them. And so just find your friends you know, your, your, your peers around the company build an internal coalition and, and make the pitch. What we also have here to kind of wrap things out is a resource that is shareable. So everybody has a little bit of um, uh, a tool for their own memories, but also something that you can share. So I'm going to hand it off to Chip York, who is our director of marketing and communications at Business for America. And he is going to tell you about this resource and um, well, hi, hi, everybody. This is uh, Chip York with Business for America. Um, as Bonk just stated, uh, at the following or following this webinar, we'll be sending out a communication with uh, a link to the full video, um, community, the, the contact information for all the speakers today. Uh, is, and we'll, we'll, we'll be sending that out to not just attendees of this uh, webinar, but even those who signed up and weren't able to attend. So everybody should be getting that um, information. But um, Jess at Motivote and I have been working on this great resource uh, for us to share with you guys as well, which is basically a toolkit um, that captures all the different tools that you saw today, how to get in touch with them. There's some um, strategies uh, that your company can employ in terms of rolling these out. So I'll just take you on a quick, very quick little tour of what this looks like. Um, so you'll see um, our reference to the webinar. Um, we even have, like, especially as you talk to your internal audiences, um, you might want to kind of, you know, think about what is going to be uh, the, 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 the levers that are going to make them interested for our companies to get engaged. Um, so we have a couple of, um, you know, points here around, you know, why are employers such effective channels for supporting voters and really building that uh, business case as to why companies should care about civic engagement amongst their workforce. Then we also have, you know, more specifically, you know, how can companies uh, benefit from engagement and speaking around values, speaking around engaged workforce, um, and even aligning those with your business goals. And then we have um, a kind of a, an action plan or seven strategic actions for um, how you can help your employees vote. And we've condensed these down into some, you know, very, very short um, actions, but there's a lot of thought and a lot of um, uh, things to consider as you think through these different um, actions. So feel free to reach out to Bonk or myself and we can you know, walk, walk you through like the right way to, to approach uh, these, um, these, these actions uh, for your company specifically. And then we have um, kind of going down the page a little bit, we do capture each one of the tools uh, that you've heard presented today with a brief description, a few bullet points as to you know, what differentiates their tools from others, a few screenshots, uh, and then you'll even see here like the get in touch buttons under each one of the tools so that um, you can reach out directly to the speakers um, following today's presentation. So 
I don't want to make everybody dizzy, but I'm just you know, showing you a little bit of what is behind here. And then uh, there is, if you go down the page even more, there is a more exhaustive list of other civic engagement resources uh, that are all mentioned here. And just did a great job of providing a key with the little icons here around, you know, what differentiates a lot of these different plat platforms for each other. And you can see the key here, um, everything from, you know, whether they are portals, whether they reflect different local uh, laws um, and all the different uh, different features that these different tools have. And then last but not least, um, there, we started a frequently asked questions uh, section at the bottom of this resource guide. I think we're going to take a lot of the questions that were asked today uh, in this discussion and we and add those to these to this list as well. Um, but yeah, so if anybody has any questions about this particular uh, guide or if you would like more information or you know would like some thought partners to think through you know what the best way is to engage some of these platforms for your organizations, please. Uh, reach out to us and we'll be happy to get you in touch with the right people. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Chip. All right. Well, we have uh, another thing in the QA says fantastic program. Thanks to each of you, uh, which is only last thing I have to say as well. So thank you to all of our speakers. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, JJ, for making this a lively conversation. Thanks, Chip, for helping bring it home and getting that resource to, to everybody. And thanks everybody for joining us. We'll uh, be in touch real soon with a um, wrap up of the event and all the tools that we've shown. Thanks again.